KetterAtCoach.com. Use lighters to help with cortex removal. Lighters is Lens Iris Diaphragm Retropulsion Syndrome. We learned that from our friend Bob Yosher years ago. Dr. Osher taught us that, especially in these ultra myopic eyes, sometimes in eyes that are post vitrectomy, you can have a situation where the infusion pressure from your device is going to cause a, basically a reverse pupillary block. You're going to push the iris onto the anterior lens capsule, and you're going to cause the pressure in the anterior chamber to be much higher than the pressure in the posterior chamber. Not posterior segment, posterior chamber. And because of that, you'll get this very deepening of the anterior chamber, and it'll be a very awkward situation. And well, the way to fix it is, obviously just tent up the iris to equilibrate the pressure between the anterior chamber and posterior chamber. And so we're going to use that lighters, though, at, to our advantage after we get this nucleus out. So I made an extra pair of these. Did you notice that, by the way? Just so I can have better access to really chop this dense cataract up. And we're obviously showing you the video at high speed. It's a pretty dense cataract. I wish patients wouldn't wait this long for cataract surgery. And obviously the patient's a little bit less than cooperative, a lot of head movement there. And we chopped this cataract, finally kind of saw through it, and we'll break this up into a lot of small pieces and remove it. The phaco part's the easy part. And though lighters is not too much of an issue here, especially because we've slightly prolapsed that lens out of the capture bag. And in a highly myopic eye like this, there's plenty of working room, so that's no issue at all. And then again, just taking our time, sub-chopping the pieces into smaller fragments, and then emulsifying them down, and that goes pretty well. Now, this patient does not have the biggest pupil to begin with. So you'll see after the nucleus is removed and we're getting for, going for the cortex removal, the pupil is on the smaller side. You're not able to see all the caps or bag. So we'll take out as much as we can of that lens material here, the epinuclear shell, nucleus already gone. Now take a look at the pupil size, not the biggest pupil size. And so now you, get, you see the lighters expanding there as I put the probe in just to get that last little nuclear fragment out. And now, before I put the IA probe in, look how the pupil comes down. But I'll use the lighters to my advantage. Watch this. I can push those cataract pieces here in the front. Let's get those out with the FACO probe. And there's that last piece. Again, you can see the lighters. See how it deepens and up the anterior chamber dramatically, and the capsule bag is distended almost. Now the pupil's on the small side, probably about five millimeters here. But it's not going to be enough for us to really see the capsule bag. So I go on the IA probe. Watch this. Now, don't tent up the iris, don't equilibrate it, leave the eye in a little bit of this lighters, as long as the patient's comfortable, and that has the pupil widely expanded. So now I can really see the entirety of the caps or bag and make sure I get out all that cortex and even polish up the anterior, uh, the undersurface of that anterior caps or rim here and give the patient a really nice outcome. Keep in mind, sometimes this lighters is a little uncomfortable for the patient, so if that's the case, you can undo it. And again, all you have to do there is you can either push down on the capsule or do what I just did there, which is lifting up the iris, and you do that without suction. And now you've equilibrated it. Now I don't need to see the caps or bag equator as much because I know it's already been cleaned, and so now I don't have the lighters in effect anymore. And then the pupil comes down again to maybe about a five-ish millimeter in diameter. Let's fill up our caps or bag here with our viscoelastic. This is our cohesive viscoelastic, and that'll also help expand the pupil a little bit, give us a little um, viscomedriasis. And the lens that's going to go in uh, requires a little bit bigger incision here, so we'll just expand that just a hair. This lens is a three-piece lens coming in in a meniscus design for these ultra-low diopteric powers. So here comes our lens, and we're going to deliver that. We're back to normal one speed here on the rest of this video. And you know our 7L rule, right? So the first half that comes out better look like a number 7, like that. That looks good. There's a 7. And then the trailing half, because it opens up, should look like a capital letter L. That's the 7L rule. And that 7 looks good. Now the L, there it is. And, of course, the lens as a whole has that anti-S orientation. you got to remember, if it looks like the letter S, you may be making a silly mistake or a stupid mistake because the letter S is silly or stupid, not good. And here's our lens. It's a 5-diopter lens, so, again, very myopic eye. And that's for a post-op goal for this patient of about minus 1. Now we'll finish up the case again, a little bit of lighter. See how it expands a lot? So we'll go, we'll use that lighter to our advantage to help expand that pupil to really get a good view of everything. And once that's done, we can equilibrate it out a little bit by lifting up on that iris. 
and then we can um, seal up the incisions, call this a day. So keep in mind, lighters, thank you, Dr. Osher, for explaining that to us years ago. And it's a very useful technique to be able to manage that. For nucleus removal, I do agree, you don't want it so deep and you want to resolve the lighters pretty efficiently. But for cortex removal, or even like this, ensuring the IOLs and the caps are back, use the lighters to your advantage. Just keep in mind, it can be a little uncomfortable for the patient if you don't have a lot of anesthesia, and you may need to, uh, to uh, break the lighters or maybe give a little more anesthetic. 